Father, we just thank you again for another Sabbath. And gracious God, we do ask that you will teach us by your spirit. Help us to be able to see and understand more and more about your spirit, <clears throat> why you gave it to us, that we may be able to evangelize well. And so, Lord, we ask that you will continue, O oh gracious God, to help us, uh, that we may be able to help others come into the kingdom and to be able, O oh God, to operate in kingdom love and power. Now, Father, we pray for all those that are here. We pray for all those that are on the way. We give you glory. In Yeshua's name, if you all agree, say amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> As we look at Acts again, uh, and looking at uh, 2.15, we want to understand some things about the 120 uh, that was there waiting for Shavuot. Amen? The Holy Spirit to come. Hallelujah. Uh, and as we read this verse, Acts 2.15, it says, For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. <clears throat> That's an amazing thing that everybody have neighborhood uh, rules, neighborhood ways that they love to operate by. And, uh, of course, <clears throat> there were those that was mocking, as we were talking about sort of last week, um, mocking them, but we have to understand some things that sometimes people obey the uh, community rules better than they obey God's rules, amen? And this is, this is something that uh, uh, we must realize, but we all have to grow to whatever rules we have to live by because somebody has lived before us and kind of showing us the way. What did the Bible say about a child? Train what? Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they will, what? Will not depart from it. And so that tells us right there is that we got to give them a way to practice life. So when we practice our faith, we can be more what? Protected. Amen? And this is, this, is a, this is a real good key, and I just thank the Lord for it because uh, a lot of times we use the English word, all we got to do is believe. Uh, yes, you believe, but you act accordingly. And that's faith. Because James, the Lord's brother, said what? Faith without what? Works is dead. And we wonder why we don't see the Bible in action in our lives. It is because of the fact that we are not working on what we are studying. Amen? That means so much to us. Uh, I was talking to uh, Charles Cates <clears throat> uh, just the other, yeah, yesterday. And he was talking about, he put some of the things in practice that he learned here. And he say he's doing wonderful. And I was so glad to hear that. He says, Pastor Green, he said, I certainly am glad that I was able to sit under the teaching there to help me. And I said, well, praise God. Amen? That was so good. Uh, and it was so good, it blessed me to hear it. Amen? So I, uh, <clears throat> it, is, it is such a wonderful thing if we continue to walk out the things that God has given unto us in the word of God. 
Uh, would you give us uh, some of the commentary on that uh, verse, please? Apparently, as the 120 yes. were speaking in tongues, yes. the mocking increased until most were mocking. Uh -huh. Even some of those who understood the languages uh -huh. may have joined them. Mm -hmm. Peter drew no attention to the fact that some did understand. Amen. He answered only to those who mocked. Uh -huh. The 120 were not drunk, mm -hmm. as the crowd supposed. Yeah. Actually, <clears throat> even the sweet wine was not very strong. Mm -hmm. In those days, they had no way of distilling alcohol or fortifying drinks. All right. Now stop right there for a moment. Bless you. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> this is a marvelous thing because we can see uh, their community had rules. Amen. We also can understand that the 120 that was obeying the Lord who told them to go uh, to Jerusalem and tarry and wait for the for Sheva or the, the Holy Spirit, um, we find that as they did that, they got really blessed. Amen? Amen? In fact, wouldn't it be marvelous if we could have the Holy Spirit to move in here? Uh, it, didn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have to be as strong as it was on the day of Sheva or Pentecost. But if he just move in here, just give us a little breeze of it. I tell you, it'll change your life. You would realize that this is the thing I need most in my life. Glory be to God. Did y'all hear that? How many would like to see uh, the wind blow through here like that? It does. My God, it'll make evangelism easy. It'll make your life easy, it'll make everything easy. Now when I say that, what I mean easy for you to carry out uh, the word of God, to be able to talk to others, because the Holy Spirit has so many different functions. If, if you need to, uh, help in your speech, he'll give it to you. Come on, somebody. If you need help in your mental faculties, he'll give it to you. Whatever it is that you need, the Holy Spirit will help us to deliver it to the next soul. That's what it's all about. Now, you might say, well, suppose they didn't have any training of the scriptures at all. Well, it will help get them saved. Come on now. Y'all see that? And <clears throat> where they can study and begin to understand some things. Now, I ask you a question today. You were a believer. But once you received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, was there an enlightening that you never had before? Come on, somebody. Amen. I know it happened to me. I saw some things after the Holy Spirit came, you know, that I received, that uh, some things that I just wasn't used to acting that way, wasn't used to moving that way, saying those things that I said after I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And you cannot receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit unless you're already his. Is that good? Come on now. So you can tell right away if you're his or not because you can then receive the gift of your Savior. And like I said before, God gave the world Yeshua and then Yeshua gave the believers his spirit. And both of them gave the best gift they had for you. 
Amen? So this is a, a marvelous thing that we must be able to understand. And uh, God is still working to help us. So the 120, they were being mocked and they uh, were, were making jokes about them. You know, well, they must be drunk. But thank God for Peter. Amen? Because Peter stood up and said, uh-uh, they weren't drunk as you suppose. Huh? But this was, and he began to tell them about the Holy Spirit, what they receive. And, uh, and this, listen, this is a powerful thing. It's a powerful witness for anyone who teaches the word of God. Because if you teach the word of God and you have been empowered, amen, not only saved, but what? Empowered to carry that word. And when you see the Holy Spirit working with you as your helper, it actually give you an assurance that while you're talking that you never had before. Come on now. It'll give you strength. Amen. <clears throat> so it's it's a it's a powerful thing to operate in uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit. So they were uh, this this hundred and twenty that was in the upper room. And they are being talked about and make uh, sort of jokes about it, you know, while they act in this way. And uh, they must be drunk. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it amazing? No matter what, people don't have to know the truth about you. They just make up something and plaster it on you. Amen. Uh, it's amazing. Please be careful. Because what I'm hearing from the scriptures, and I'm sure you've heard it also, that whatever you say about somebody else, you have to give account to God about it. Did y'all hear that? So if we want to save ourselves, if we want to not have to answer those kind of things like happened right here in the Bible, don't say anything about anybody. Come on now. Why is that important? Because if you have to answer to that, uh, suppose you don't get a chance to say, Father, uh, forgive me, or ask the person for forgiveness, or whatever. I think it's very hard for somebody to go to someone and say, I've been talking about you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I, th I think that's... Uh, a tough thing to do. Anybody ever did that? Amen, amen, amen. But it's better that you do that than to wait till you get to see the Lord and he's making the rulings, amen? So <clears throat> this is uh, an opportunity to work in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can help us to become jewels of God and God can use you in places, places to do exploits. Come on now. The church of the living God ought to be operating so powerfully today. <clears throat> People ought to be running in the church. Amen? All right. Now, another thing about this is that we must understand that those who were mocking when people, uh, when uh, Peter began to tell them about it. Peter began to let them know that this was the Holy Spirit sent from God to help them to be able to take the word, you know, uh, to other nations. Now, this is, this is marvelous. I believe that if we understood the purpose of everything God gave to us, we will be able to operate better in the Lord. Because a lot of us don't understand, and then some of us don't get the training to understand 
uh, like the Holy Spirit, what is it all about? And really get the training so when you start functioning in something, you begin to understand, well, that's God helping me. Amen? Amen. So this is uh, uh, very, very key. Would you take us a little further, please? Their strongest drinks were wine and beer. Uh -huh. And they made it a practice to dilute wine with several parts of water. Uh -huh. It would have taken a great deal to make them drunk that early in the morning. Yes. Also, they would not be drinking in a public place at that hour. Yes. Thus, the mockers were shown to be absurd. Absurd, yes. Uh, so we can, we can see that, like I was talking earlier, every community have their rules. Amen. You just don't do certain things in certain communities that's really strict. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is another thing that we must understand, that there was no way that you could distill. Anybody know what distill, distilling something is? Uh, in other words, you get, when you distill something, uh, actually what you're doing is getting rid of all of the water content and you're getting only the, like the alcohol content that will be left in the uh, flask, so to speak, if you're distilling it. Uh, now, here's, here's the thing about that. When you're getting the pure alcohol, it'll make you drunk quicker. Come on, somebody. Oh, y'all didn't know I knew that, huh? Okay. Well, I used to have to do that kind of thing when I was working for a tribe, you know. But whatever the product was, we had to distill it to take off all the water and the impurities, and that would come over in another flask, and then all of the pure stuff would go in another direction because uh, each uh, solution has a certain temperature. What did I say? Yeah, each solution, uh, you learned that in chemistry. Each solution has a certain temperature. So if uh, something comes off at 20 degrees, then uh, say water comes off at uh, 20 degrees. I'm just making up something right now so you'd understand. Uh, then that will come off in a flask. That comes off first. You take that flask and you set that water aside, put another flask on there because the good stuff is going to come off later that comes off at 30 or 40 degrees. All right, are you all hearing that? So this is what I'm just trying to make it short so that you will understand they didn't have a way to do that way back there 2,000 years ago. Y'all see that? Amen. <clears throat> now, this day and time, people learn more about chemistry, and they were able to separate liquids. And so the liquids became stronger. This is the reason why people can drink just a little bit and get drunk. Oh, y'all didn't know I knew that, did you? Amen. So, but, see, you don't need much of it when you're getting the pure stuff. Amen, somebody. All right. So, there was no way to do this back 2,000 years ago. In fact, uh, I don't know of anything I've read that deals with chemistry way back there 2,000 years ago. But today, uh, you got all kinds of uh, labs set up where you can do a lot of different things. 
and take, all, take things off at a certain temperature and things like that so that uh, you will get the purity of what you desire to have. Amen? All right. So this is one of the, the keys about this kind of thing is that because we have a mindset of today. We don't have a mindset of what they had back there. And this is the reason why <clears throat> if you go to seminary or you go to a Bible school, the first thing they want to do is for you to learn how to put the scriptures in its proper setting. Y'all hear that? You put the scripture in its proper setting because then you can understand more about what really happened. But if you try to put it in your day and time, you cannot understand it. Amen? And you'll make a lot of mistakes trying to get to the bottom of really what happened or how the Bible really talks about something. Amen? So uh, this is another key to what Peter was trying to let them know. These people are not drunk as you suppose, but he was letting them know <clears throat> that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that good stuff? Amen. And so when you find out, because even they did not know what they were supposed to receive. But it came as a rushing what? Mighty wind. And a rushing mighty wind, we're talking about the Spirit of God. Amen? The Holy Spirit of God, a helper to help you to do the work of the kingdom of God. Man, that's good stuff. Amen? And I'm so glad it hasn't stopped coming yet. Amen? We are still receiving, and the uh, people are beginning to do things they weren't able to do when they first came to the Lord. Because they are beginning to see God's hand on them. Amen? Where they are able to function and uh, know things that they were not able to know before. Because if you read in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, chapter 12, you'll begin to read <coughs> about the non-manifestations of the Holy Spirit, and it began to break it down to you and let you know what each thing is, and then you can put it in its proper place. Amen? Because we didn't know we would need that help. And I'll tell you, this is a key right here, because this day and time, even though he gave it 2,000 years ago, it can help you and outsmart the one who think they got a lot of wisdom. God still got more wisdom than you, your natural self. But when God's spirit moved, it began to wake you up. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know what we would do without the Holy Spirit. Amen. And a lot of us might not see the Holy Spirit working, but you take somebody that's just ministering the word just like I am right now. And sometimes uh, it's not on the paper, but I'm reading something, and all of a sudden, here come a thought. And I said, whoa. <laughs> and I began to talk it. Because the Holy Spirit gave it, it's not on the paper. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? And then when you get a chance, you say, that was God. You go back and you check it and you say, wow. Thank you, Lord. Amen? 
So it happens like that. God speaks to whomever is in the congregation who need it. That's the word they needed at that particular time to be able to help them in life. So you see how God uses the speaker to be able to help people in the pew? Hallelujah. This is the way he does it. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. So, so uh, this is a mighty thing we are talking about, and I'm so glad we got a God like we do have. Amen? Praise God. <clears throat> now, uh, something else. It says that uh, also they would not <clears throat> uh, be uh, drunken uh, at that hour. And that was the community thing. The, the Jews that just didn't drink early in the morning. And folks, I must say something here since uh, the commentary says that. A lot of people drink anytime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they feel got that taste, come on now. They probably feel like, listen, some of us have drank pop soda. And you say, well, you see a soda, you say, well, I want that. And so you do what? You go get it, or a cup of coffee, or whatever, you know, your special kind of tea, or whatever it is. You say, I need a cup of that. Amen. Well, it is because of how you have trained your body. Come on now, somebody. Amen. A lot of us going to act like we don't know nothing about that kind of thing. Huh? <laughs> Amen, amen. Thank God. But, but these are the kinds of things that we need to talk about because believers don't get rid of your taste bud just because you got the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. Uh, do, do I need to say that again? Huh? All right. <laughs> believers don't get rid of their taste bud just because they got the Holy Ghost. You have to control that thing. All right, somebody. Am I, am I helping anybody? Come on now. This is so important, folks. We just don't realize how much God is in our life day after day, moment by moment. Have you went to do something and and uh, you get a little nudge, say, no, don't do that. And you go on about your business, and after a while you think about it, you say, I'm so glad I didn't do that. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And, and our ladies, maybe I'll say this, if y'all don't get upset with me. Sometime you're in the store, you say, ooh, ain't that nice, huh? I'd like to, I'd like to buy that right there. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost touch you nudge you, and, and you, you walk on by it. Come on now. And then you get home and say, I'm so glad I didn't buy that. I don't know what to do. Because somebody came along and gave you one. Come on, somebody. It's amazing. Amen. I see you, brother. Hallelujah. So it, it's, a, it's, it's a marvelous thing. We just don't realize how much God is in our life day after day, 24-7. He's there, folks. He's here. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Could I get uh, Acts 2, 16, please? Hallelujah. Acts 2, 16. All right, it says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet who? Joel. Joel. Elohim. Joel. Amen? Now, the prophet Joel had a lot to, uh, for us to realize that the Holy Spirit was coming. Amen? He prophesied it 
Of course, prophecy is not always foretelling, but it does foretell. Come on, somebody. Sometime you just uh, give us a message. Come on now. Might not be uh, something. And by the way, the spirit of the adversary is not telling you before it happened. It is the spirit of the adversary who's always picking up the end, the tail of things. Come on, somebody. They can tell you what has happened in your life, but they can't tell you what God is going to do in your life. And that's one way to tell the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of the adversary. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes, yes. He always want to make you feel bad about something that has passed. And that's the reason why I picked up that book. In fact, I got it with me today, uh, that God will come and redeem your time and redeeming your timeline. Amen? Redeeming your timeline. I tell you, you got a powerful God. Now, that is a key right there. Uh, I want you to understand, I don't care what has happened in your life. And you might hate that thing that has happened in your life. But yet, at the same time, when you go to God, God can redeem the time because you prayed about it. Because you did what? Prayed you prayed about it. You spoke it out to God. You spoke it to your friends. You spoke it to your family. Say, I'm so sorry I did this and that. Oh, Lord, would you forgive me? And the Lord said, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But Lord, I, I did it five, ten years ago. The Lord said, don't worry about it. I made time. Hallelujah. All I got to do is turn back the clock in your day. Come on now. And he fixed that thing in your life during the time that you did it. And now you're free. Would you tell somebody you're free? Come on now. You're free. Come on now. See, a lot of us get hung up with something and keep on living that way because we feel that way. And you, you just say, it ain't no use. Oh, yes. His precious blood, glory be to God, is for all time. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We got to realize that we have a true redeemer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. His precious blood can go in a time in history. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. He made time, but time does not control him. Hallelujah. Time controls us, yes. but not him. Glory be to God. Y'all getting anything? Hallelujah. Uh, it's very important that we begin to see this. Would you give me, uh, see, yeah, we got a few minutes. Go ahead. Give me a, a little bit of that, please. Peter declared that what they had seen and heard yeah. was a fulfillment of Joel 2, 28 through 32. Yes. The context in Joel goes on to deal with the coming judgment yeah. at the end of the age. Yes. But Joel, like the other Old Testament prophets, yeah. did not see the time span between the first and second comings of Christ. Okay. Even would, you, would you stop right there, please? And let me uh, sort of hit 
Uh, could I get Joel t- 28 through 32 so we won't uh, get too far and I don't get a chance to uh, say something about it, please? Uh, yeah, Joel 2:28, and we'll go through 32. Uh, we'll see if we can get that in for today. Amen. Isn't God good? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I mean, he knows what to do for us. He made us, folks. He made us. Hallelujah. All right. Joel uh, 2.28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon how much flesh? All. All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Now, God is telling you what is going to come in your life. See, God can do that because he can do what? He can work with time. Not only can he move it back in your timeline or your time cycle, he can move it ahead. Before you get there. Oh, my God. Ah. Come on, somebody. Is this good stuff or what? God will take care of you. Anybody remember that song? This is so important that we understand that God can fix things for you before you get to be 50. Come on now. Or 60. Come on now. And, 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 come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad we got a God, a creator, who knows what to do with his creation. Folks, don't worry about all the things that has happened in your life. Just recall it and t- tell him about it. Tell him what's on your mind because you're thinking about getting even with somebody. Come on, somebody. Lord, I don't like what they did to me. And I'm going to get even with them. See, you're looking ahead, aren't you? But when you ask him, you ask the Lord to help you with it. And then you go to sleep and you wake up the next morning. You, and somebody says something about that person or that thing or whatever. And what happened? You say, I, I ain't going to have nothing to do with that. Why? What happened during the night? Huh? Did he fix it? Yeah. He can fix that thing and change your mind. So you won't get in in, in any trouble. Because he needs you to do something else. And not get in trouble. Come on, somebody. If we would rely on God, we wouldn't have so many problems. But the problem is we always want to do what we want to do. Folks, we can not allow ourselves to do whatever we feel like doing. Because one day it's going to get you. Amen? And so uh, God... And his Holy Spirit is just so wonderful. He can help us to straighten out our lives, past, present, and future. Ah, Suppose 
Suppose we didn't have a God like that. What, what would we do? What would we do? Amen. <clears throat> and see, folks, this is, this is so powerful because people who do not know your Savior and understand when he came into the world, he came into the world when the time was right. When he, that's what the Bible said. Say he came when the time was right. Right for what? For all humanity. Therefore, he can help, uh, <clears throat> like I said, past, come on, present, and the future. So it's no way you have to live in sin. I, man, I, somebody should have said hallelujah. Huh? Yes. <clears throat> uh, he can get rid of anything in your life, past, present, and future. Come on now. Folks, I, I, you know, I don't know what else I could say that, that, that would be so good. His precious blood. Come on now. That's the reason why the cross. See, people don't preach the cross no more. That's the reason why the cross is so great. Come on now. It is where he shed his precious blood. The cross. My God, my God. You're talking about redeeming. Ah, that's where your redemption came in, folks. Glory be to God. And there's nobody else you can turn to to do what he did for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty thing. And so this, this is a, uh, a, a, a powerful thing. <clears throat> uh, can, oh, we got a few more minutes. Uh, would you uh, read a little bit more? I think we had a little bit more of that. Even Peter himself yes. did not understand how long it would be. Uh -huh. He did see, however, that the messianic age was coming and that the present fulfillment of Joel's prophecy would continue until then. All right, so when I said he came when the time was right, he came at the time where Joel had already prophesied saying that this will happen. Come on now. How many know he came on time? <laughs> He came at a time that he uh, was needed in the world, that all the saints needed him. Amen? Amen. This, is a, this is a powerful thing that we have to realize uh, that our Lord has done so much for us, we can't even imagine all the wonderful things that he has done for us to redeem us. Amen? So you don't have to carry around a heavy load in your life any longer. Come on now. Oh, I tell you, that, that's a powerful thing. Did you have any more in that, in that verse? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Uh, but it did say this, it says, uh, he did say, um, however, that the Messianic age was coming and that uh, the present fulfillment of Joel's prophecy would continue until then. So when he came, that was fulfilling it. Amen? Amen. And I'm so glad he fulfilled it because I needed it. How about you? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why the church ought to always be in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. 
because we have a Savior that can keep you cleansed. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, Hallelujah. oh, we got six more. Okay. Can we get that next verse, please? 28, 29. Or uh, oh, can we? Yeah, yeah, that's Acts. Uh, yeah, we, we were at Acts 2, 28 through 32. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, uh, well, that's the place that we were in. Uh, we were in, no, we, uh, I, I don't need your, uh, okay. I'll tell you, okay, let's go to Acts 2, 17. Acts 2.17. We'll do it that way. Amen. Acts 2.17. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit, capital, amen, in, in for English, <laughs> upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your uh, young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams uh, you know this is telling the young people exactly what's going to happen in their day and telling the older people what's going to happen in their day this is a powerful thing Yes, it's very true, a restoration. Folks, listen, <clears throat> that's the reason why this book took my eye, talking about the timeline. Because, uh, now we said timeline in America, but over in Israel, it's a, it's a time cycle. Come on now, how about it? seed time and harvest? Come on, it just keep rolling, amen? amen? You keep getting more seed, you get more to eat, and sometimes more of us begin to get larger. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But seed time and harvest, amen? amen? So it just keep on going, keep on going day and night, amen? That's the way God made it, and that also works in time. Okay? But God can slow it down. If you don't believe it, ask Joshua. What happened to the son during his time when he was fighting the battle? Son, stand still. Can you believe that God will listen to a man? Come on, somebody. Well, if you don't believe that, you can't be forgiven. Come on, somebody. God listen to men. God will forgive you. You can redeem. God will redeem you. His precious blood. That's what it's all about. So whatever is in your life, past, present, future, take it to him. Listen, you all are just not happy enough for me. Or is it the mass? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We ought to be praising him like never before. Amen? <clears throat> All right. Uh, give me the, let me see. I, I think it's, a, uh, yeah, the commentary. Yeah. Give me a little bit. We got two more minutes. We might can get some of that in. All right? Peter made one apparent change in the prophecy. Yes. Under the inspiration of the Spirit, he specified what the word afterward mm -hmm. in Joel's prophecy means. Uh -huh. The outpouring is in the last days. Uh -huh. Does he recognize that the last days began with the ascension of Yeshua uh -huh. in chapter 3, verse 2? 19 through 21. Yes. Now, you notice uh, he's telling us uh, exactly 
uh, about what, what's going to take place. And this is a marvelous thing because you've got less worries because if you're saved, the Holy Spirit is a helper. We call it the what? Para, paraclete, one call alongside to help you, to be able to help you doing uh, what you have to do from day to day, no matter the hour. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so these things are just so important. And listen, don't you ever carry worry in yourself. Then he gave the feast days that you will be able to zero in. I mean, the whole nation. That's the reason why we keep the feast days year to year. Did y'all hear that? Because when you keep the feast days, I was talking to uh, Diggin Green today, and we were talking about uh, obeying God as opposed to not obeying God. Yes, there's curses in the scripture, but yes, there's also blessings in the scripture. Come on now. Tell it. So that we, yes, this is the reason why we must pay attention to the scriptures so that we will realize that God wants to bless you. And then there's something else. I remember when we were at the prayer table over there uh, many times, Elder, and we had the promises book. And all the promises of God is to bless his people. Come on, somebody. And we used to pray all day, uh, you know, half the day. Come on now. Because of the fact we need prayer. We need prayer. We want to stay clean before God. Are you all hearing this? This is what it's all about, folks. So we want to thank God. Thank you all so much. God bless you.